Welcome to part five of PixInsight for Beginners, where we're going to see the most dramatic change to our image so far. We're going to be looking at noise reduction, and we're going to be using multi-scale linear transform to do the job. So if you'd like to learn how to use it, stick around. G'day guys, Paul from Paulie Man Astro here for another episode of Pix Insight for Beginners. Today we are looking at noise reduction. Specifically, we're going to be using multi-scale linear transform because I find it's really simple and easy to use. And once you've set it up, it'll just work. So it's really nice to use. So let's jump into Pix Insight and let's have a look. Welcome back into Pix Insight for part five of Pix Insight for Beginners, where we're gonna look at noise reduction. A reminder of where we are at this point. Uh, we have, in the first episode, we learned how to apply ABE to get rid of the green background uh, or the green cast across the, the image due to light pollution. We then learned how to use dynamic crop so that we could crop out the edge artifacts from stacking. In episode two, we learned how to stretch our image permanently so that we can save it and, and put it on our Facebook or Instagram or wherever we'd like to put it. Episode three, we learned how to create these process icons over here so that we can constantly keep coming back and using these processes over and over again and they save our settings so we don't have to remember our settings all the time. We just have to do it once and then it's always there for us, which is nice. In Episode four, we learned how to use photometric color calibration to get rid of any remaining tint, any remaining cast in the background and to correct our color so that it looks the way we expect it to look. Today, as I said, we're gonna use noise reduction. We're gonna open up the process multi-scale linear transform and it works on layers. So it works on uh, layer one is just the one pixel level at the actual pixel level. Layer two is a two by two array of pixels, so slightly larger grouping and so on. It builds its way up as we go. For noise reduction, I like to have my layers at five. So then we'll have up to a 16 by 16 uh, grouping of pixels that it's looking at. So larger and larger scales, larger and larger structures within the image, basically. Uh, most of the noise is going to be in layer one and two. Our stars are going to kind of start appearing in layers three and four because they're, they're slightly bigger. And then by the time we get to the 16 by 16, that's where we're starting to see structure within the nebula itself. So what I want to do is go through and just basically set up my noise reduction parameters. So on layer one, I'm going to click on noise reduction. This is the section I'm going to be working on. And I'm going to change the threshold to five. Basically, it's, it's kind of like a strength the threshold's like a strength that it's, that's where it kicks in, the noise reduction kicks in. And the amount tells me, am I gonna do the full noise reduction or am I gonna blend it back with the original? So the amount 0.5, I'm gonna take 50% of this noise reduction at this scale and then I'm gonna blend it with the original 50%. So it, it, it's, it's doing a fair bit of noise reduction but then it's blending back to smooth it out a little bit so it's just not quite as severe. Uh, I always leave the iterations at one. So scale two again, noise reduction. I'm gonna set the threshold to 3.5. And here I'm gonna set the, the amount to 0 0.45. Layer three, I'm gonna to set to 2.5. And I'm gonna set the amount to 0 0.4. Layer four, I am gonna to set to a threshold of 1.5. And again, the amount 0 0.4. And then finally on layer five, I am gonna set this, cause this is quite large. Now these are large structures. I don't want much noise reduction at all here. So I'm gonna set it to 0 0.5 and 0 0.35. Okay, and then I'm gonna do nothing on the residual cause that's a, a huge layer there. I don't want any noise reduction there. So my noise reduction is now set up, um, ready to go. The other thing that I'm going to do, so, so noise uh, occurs mostly in, in the small scales at the, at the one pixel and the two by two block pixel level. That's why we're doing most of our noise reduction there. And multi-scale linear transform is great because it does apply different noise reductions to the different size blocks that we're looking at. The other thing, if I zoom in and have a look, there's quite a lot of noise 
in the dark areas in the background, but there's not much noise in the stars. They look quite smooth. And then if I look at the nebula, maybe I'll zoom out a little bit there. If I look at the nebula, the darker parts of the nebula still have some noise, but the brighter parts of the, the nebula have much less. So not only is, does noise depend on the scale, how many blocks, sized pixels we're looking at it also depends on how much signal we got how bright the image is in in that area and that's where this other section linear mask comes in so i've worked on the noise reduction side now i'm going to tick the linear mask uh, and i'm going to open that up so we can have a look so if i go back to my original size here what i'm going to do so i can see this linear mask is i'm going to turn off my screen transfer function for a moment i'm going to click on the reset button here Okay, and the image has gone back to black because the linear mask is going to apply its own stretch here that I can see. Um, and if, if I have screen transfer function on, it, it'll double stretch. So it'll, it'll just look white and I don't want to see that. So I'm going to click on preview mask. And then I can click on this little circle button here, which is going to produce a preview, just like when we were working with... Um, histogram transformation in episode two in part two so if i open that up this is what my mask looks like so anything that's white is completely unprotected and that's the background and that's where most of the noise reduction is going to occur anything that's black is not going to have any noise reduction occurring to it so the stars and the really bright part of the nebula are pretty well not going to have any noise reduction done and the remaining colors uh are kind of giving you a sense of how much noise reduction is going to occur there. So the brighter the color, the, the more noise reduction is going to occur there. So that looks pretty good to me. Sometimes you might want to adjust the amplification. If you think you want more noise reduction in the center of the nebula, then you might increase your amplification, uh, sorry, decrease your amplification. And if you want more protection, then you would increase your amplification. So I, th I think the default there of 100 was pretty good for, for me. Um, and, and most of the time that's going to work perfectly. So now that I, I've had a look at what my mask is going to look like, that it is going to do most of its work on the background, some work on the nebulosity, but the really bright parts of the nebula and the, the brightest parts of the stars aren't going to have much noise reduction, which is what I want. So I can close my preview now. Uh, and turn off the preview mask here. I don't need that anymore. Uh, and then I can turn my screen transfer function back on so I can see it. So I'm going to zoom in to this dark area over here uh, just so I can see it. And I'm going to produce a little preview here, just a, a small little preview. It doesn't have to be very big, maybe that size. So all I did was go to the preview button here, left click and hold and drag it out and then let go. And that's produced a preview for me. And you can see there's a little preview tab here that I can click on. So that's only showing me the preview now. So if I run multi-scale linear transform now, it's only going to happen on that preview, not the actual image, which is nice. So if I run it, and it can sometimes take a bit of time, but it, it's usually a pretty quick process. It's quite, um, quite efficient this process, but it's got to do it on each channel. It's got to do it on the red, then the green, then the blue. So it'll do it three times. There we go. So I can see, hopefully if I zoom in a little bit, I can see it's it's done a little bit of work. So this little button up here is the undo preview button. I can, I can click that forwards and backwards to see what it looked like before and after. And you can see the effect. It was quite noisy before, and now the background is a lot smoother but it hasn't done a huge amount to the stars. The stars still look pretty well the same, which is nice. That's what I want to see. Okay, so it's done a pretty good job. That's only happened on that preview though, not on the actual image. So if I click back on the image tab here um, and, and let's zoom out so we can see the whole image. What we might do is also look at the nebula itself with some of the dark area out here as well. So that's preview two here. Um, and let's zoom out a bit so we can see that. Uh, and let's run multi-scale linear transform on this preview and see what it looks like. And hopefully we'll see that the brighter part of the nebula won't get affected all that much, but the dark part will. And that's already been, that's already happened, which is great. So this might be a little bit more subtle at this scale, but hopefully you can see that the background, the darker area to the right has smoothed out a lot, but not much has happened to the nebula. 
if I zoom in, maybe it'll become a bit more apparent the change that's happening. So quite noisy on the right, a lot smoother. We don't want to get rid of the noise entirely. We still want a little bit of grain because otherwise it's going to look a little bit odd, but you can definitely see that it has smoothed it out and made it look a lot nicer than it was. So we've now got our multi-scale linear transform set up. We can run this, oops, we can run this on the proper image itself now. So I've gone back to the image tab. Let's run multi-scale linear transform on the actual image itself. So it, it does what we needed to do. And you can see, cause we've been working on it on a preview, it's really quick. Uh, now it's already, it's already done the maths in the background. So it's really quick to apply. Um, let's create a new instance of this cause we want to save this processing icon so we can always use it now. So go to the new instance, the triangle, and drag it off onto the screen. We can close that now. Let's right click, set icon identifier, and we'll call this MLT for multi-scale linear transform. And that slots in just above PCC there. And now I can left click and hold to, to select all my icons here, right click, save selected icons, and we've been calling this example. So, I mean, you, you could, call it whatever you want, but I've been calling it example. So I'm going to save over the top of it. It's saying, are you sure you want to do that? Yes, I do. So this is now saved. I, whenever I open up MLT now, it's got these settings applied. It's it's going to use the linear mask I want it to use. So I can just click the square button and it, it'll automatically run my MLT. It's going to be nice and quick. I don't have to remember all those settings. So this has now been noise reduced. Let's now undo the screen transfer function and quickly do our histogram stretch, just like we did in the second video. So I'm gonna just maybe do three stretches, just so I can get my image reasonably stretched. Maybe there. Can I stretch it a bit more? Okay, so this image is now quickly being stretched. Let's make that a bit larger so we can see it. I might delete these previews too, just so they're not in the way. There we go. So the background should be really quite smooth now. There's still a bit of grain. Like I said, I, want to, I still want a bit of grain in the background, but I don't want an excessive amount. You can see there was some sort of weird reflection in my uh, imaging train there. I've never noticed that before. Uh, I could probably Photoshop that out if I needed to. But the, the, the noise reduction side of things, I've got a little sidetrack there, the noise reduction side of things, the, the nebula looks really quite smooth now, and so does the background. So another episode done. Hopefully you agree today that this was the most dramatic change to our image overall. In the final video, and it should be a fairly short one, we're just going to review what we've done so far, make sure that we've got our processing icon set up, and we can compare the very first image we made to this final image once we've done a final stretch on it. So please make sure you look out for that um, and watch it when you, when you see it. Um, if you're interested in this content, please consider subscribing and pressing the like button because uh, every little bit helps. Thanks for watching.